Look at that. Quick as quick as you like. I'm going to mess this up, George, and then you can fix it. Okay, absolutely, um, yeah. <laughs> it'll take you about 10 seconds. Naga's been going mad trying to do hers. What's the attraction for you of this, doing these? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, really, everyone has this kind of natural interest in the cube, right? Yes. I, th I think everyone's... Well, a lot of people have them in their house. Uh, they they have them on their desk or, like, you know, in their room somewhere, and they, they see it. And I think there was a massive resurgence after lockdown, and it was initiated by that kind of, like, natural interest that yeah. you have. Um, and I think the reason I'm interested is just because I like to sort of sit down and have a go at something and see the progress. And uh, it was quite explicit with this from the get-go that I was getting faster, and I really liked that feeling. And then when I found that there was a, an amazing, you know, wholesome community so out there... So how did you crack it? Did I you watch YouTube join. videos to work out how to do it and then just practice? Uh, yeah, exactly. I think it's, it's quite accessible nowadays to sort of get into the solving process. Uh, I think, you know, it's 50 years since the Cube, and uh, 50 years ago, um, when it was invented, and then 1980 when it was released, you could only really l either work out yourself via intuition, which is incredible. That's why I was um, forever taking yeah, the stickers exactly. off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which makes that's, that's why you, they went for the Have you ever taken the stickers off or broken uh, it? I haven't. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm it afraid. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you make of people who break it or take the stickers off? Thanks. I mean, that's, no, I've done the same <laughs> thing. Oh, I mean, that, that's fine. That, that's their own way out. Um, but I, I think nowadays, I think it, it shows goodwill to you know sit down and just learn. <laughs> Yeah. When so you know, I love puzzles. Mm -hmm. I, I love oh, problem oh, solving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I'm curious sure like and all. Thing. No, because <laughs> I've never ever been able to do it. I don't. What is? What do you look for? Just give like I, I three hints. I think it's quite in, like inherently how intimidating, it. right? Yes. Um, but we've just been told that it's kind of ingrained in our pop culture. This is a really hard thing. No, it's just frustrating because you try it. I, I don't yeah. mind if something's hard, okay, but you okay. try it and you can't get it. What, what, are, we to, what are we this. supposed to look at? One, so one, what are you I'll break at? this one down, then yes. I'll do one at speed after, yes. right? So I think the first really important thing to understand is every piece on the cube has a distinct role, OK? So these centrepieces, those middle pieces, yeah. they never move. Yeah. They determine the colour of each side. So white is always opposite yellow, blue is always opposite green, red is always opposite orange, OK? okay? So those six pieces remain solved. You have three types of pieces, centrepieces, edge pieces, the two colour pieces, yeah. and then those corner pieces there. And the way you go about solving is around those centre pieces, you solve the edges and the corners. So edges, edges corners, first, edges, corners. Edges, corners. Well, you can do it in any order you want. When people initially started solving it, they'd do the corners first. But I think we found nowadays that doing the edges first is slightly, slightly better. So we, we, we built something called a cross, like that. So I built that on the green side. And notice how the other colour that isn't green is kind of like touching that adjacent centre in the right place, OK? okay. That forms a really effective kind of foundations for the cube. Okay. Then what I do is I kind of build it layer by layer. So not side by side. Side by side is quite a common misconception. I build those first two layers, see? Can we so slow rather than doing it sort of... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm afraid I can't teach it to you no, just no, over breakfast fine. TV. I mean, I'd love to. No, um, and I do coach people. I, I do teach people yeah. how to solve the cube. Um, but I think, you know, the main thing to understand is it's, there's a lot oh, of common misconceptions. You do the last part and a couple of steps like that. <laughs> <laughs> You can really go off people, can't you? That's incredible. I'm so impressed. But look, look, you see, look what happens. You get that, and then that's there. And then, so here's the thing, right? There's, there's, this, there's this thing, right, where you don't want to mess up what you've already made. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think that's why the Cube is a great learning tool, because it teaches you to take those setbacks in your stride, right? Yeah. You have to mess up what you've already made to solve more. And that's why it's really important when you learn that you learn these things called algorithms. And these, these kind of sets of moves that will temporarily mix it up then put it back, having switched a few pieces. So you are temporarily messing up the cube when you're solving it, but then to put it back, having solved pieces into the right and place. And there is the lesson for life how, from how today. Long do you reckon? That's great. How long do you reckon you could do that in? So on average, it takes me six seconds. We'll see, though. Um, OK, go yeah. on. <laughs> I'm, I'm counting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And that doesn't... Oh, my word. Eight seconds. OK, yeah, not, not as good. This is pretty good. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was so good. And this one is an old-fashioned one, like the kind I used to peel the stickers off. Yeah. Well, yeah, no doubt it's got tiles now instead, so people like you can't do the same thing. Uh, <laughs> what's, it, what's it like? It. I mean, so hold on, there's, a, like, a marathon, there's a... Um, you did the marathon. The marathon, of, and then how many did you things. do when you... How many did you complete? Uh, so, yeah, I sold 520 Rubik's Cubes while running the London Marathon. With them on your back? Ago. Swapping um, them over. Yeah, so it did involve backpacks. I had two backpacks on my front. Um, it was quite a logistical nightmare, I'll, I'll admit. So I had uh, about 600 Rubik's Cubes sent to me by Rubik's. I'm uh -huh. a Rubik's ambassador, so right, you know, okay. I, 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 that, that kind of worked itself out, which is great. And then I had my friends. I couldn't do it. I had my friends scramble these cubes according to computer-generated scrambles, because um, you need to, to make sure that they're very they're fair, hard yeah. scrambles. Um, and then they were distributed into bags of 50 every two miles along the race. 
And then every two miles along the marathon, I'd pick up another 50 scrambled cubes. And I'd have those 50 cubes on me while I was running. So 10 kilos of cubes oh, while wow. I was running. And you still and did it four and a half hours, didn't you? Yeah, so it had to be done sub five for it to count um, according to the regulations. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it, was, it was hard, but it was really good fun. And I was happy to sort of, um, you know, recognise the 50 year anniversary. Thanks for coming in and making us so feel impressive. really inadequate. Oh, no, not at all. So yeah, I'm impressive. sure anyone can learn. And yeah. you're very generous about us being so useless yeah. at it. But thank you. <laughs> You've taught us as well. So, yes, George, bad. thank you. George <laughs> Scully, professional Rubik's Cube solver. Brilliant. There you Brilliant. go. Thank Follow you. that. Here's the news for travel and the weather wherever you are this morning. Good morning. I'm Michelle Cross with your news in the South. Emergency.